What's up, YouTube? Sorry about the long wait on part two of this how to build the Vantage GTE series. I, since being on a one man shop, I have uh, really been focusing on production the last month or two. And, um, well, unfortunately, I can't quite get caught up, which is a good problem to have. If any of you have checked out my channel intro, or if you haven't yet, you should. I kind of get a little bit more of behind the scenes inside the shop and a little better intro of me. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into this build here. What we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to work on the cam. I'm also going to be doing a redesign on a couple components to make it more uh, 3D printing friendly. This is So this is the exact model I used on the uh, wheel that was uh, reviewed by the sim racing garage uh, right now I sell it for uh, $1,200 on my website because well the development time that went into it but also um, it's really actually a lot of uh, time on assembly that kind of adds to the cost because each of these buttons um, I will I'll wire and then I'll crimp the um, connectors the gold connectors and then I'll have a two pin connector on each button and then also I'll have a uh, heat shrink on every single wire and then that gets routed over to the Leo Bodner controller inside <clears throat> of the hub here um, same with all of the rotary encoders so yeah I mean it's like it's all very custom wiring and you could just really throw it together really quick and it would maybe take a couple of hours but when I did my first uh, when I when I did my first prototype of this the wiring and assembly was I don't know 12 hours I mean so not um, not a super easy steering wheel to make to be honest well I mean it is in some ways but just like it's not a production item if you will um, you know it's kind of I would say more in the custom category plus uh, yeah that's just kind of what's cool about these things is they're not you know they're not mass-produced uh, they are a replica which is cool but um, yeah it's someone that just built it with their hands right in their own garage or you yourself can uh, download this file and you know do all the 3d printing or um, what I'm going to do as well with with this uh, front plate is I'm going to have um, below attached a file that you can print out on a piece of paper and then just uh, stencil it onto whether a piece of carbon fiber or if you wanted to go with a different cheaper material you could do it that way and cut it out by hand. I'm going to be uh, CNC machining this piece out of I believe it was quarter inch or what did we go with yeah 0.188 inch carbon fiber so um, yeah I'm gonna be machining that we'll be doing the cam and then um, in part three I think I'll show the actual I'm gonna have to split it up probably into three maybe four parts because in uh, part three or four I'll show the actual machining the actual 3d printing um, I'm gonna be making a mold for this and because I was thinking about machining the mold but it's just gonna work out better for this one to do a silicone mold and then all of the assembly and so yeah there's still a lot a lot to get into with this wheel I also uh, from the original file I did a lot of redesigning um, so if any of you had been paying attention to the file um, it does get updated automatically I believe from that link so right now it's on version 35 every time you click save it does a new version um, and you can like you know do a description and all that but you know it's really just <laughs> once you do enough of these you really get over that so yeah, what I did do was I had to uh, redesign actually pretty much everything. So I had to redo the grips because I kind of designed the grips off of the uh, reference photos that I had. 
So this is actually a photo that I took at Sebring uh, with uh, Charlie Eastwood's car. And so, um, yeah, I had, I had made the file as a direct comparison to this here. And you'll see that there isn't as much of a groove in the back for your fingers like what I have here. So my first version, you know, it was just kind of, it was actually a lot, uh, it was a lot thinner, the whole grip was. And then there wasn't as much of a, um, I don't know, dimple, groove, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a professional. And so it just really wasn't comfortable. I went through, I would say four or five 3D printed iterations of this grip before I actually uh, got something that was comfortable. And so, I mean, that's what I think people appreciate too is, you know, being able to do more of this uh, custom, custom feeling grips because that's one thing that I have noticed that people like and I like is a thicker, more custom fit uh, versus like, you know, something that's just, uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna knock, I'm not gonna knock any other wheel builders, but something that just doesn't look or feel as good. And so, yeah, I, I had redone the grips. I also, I think I touched up on the cover, on this rear cover, and then I also had to change out this hub because it was way too uh, short. I think I only had it at like an inch or something, and in order to fit all of the, uh, the Leo Bodner components and I'll open this up here. So yeah, in order to fit um, like the uh, circuit board, like it was, it was pretty easy to get the circuit board in there. But then, when you're including ten buttons, two shifters, and five rotor encoders, all of that wiring would not fit inside there at all. Um, and so. Yeah, having just a little extra space in here really helped a lot. And then I also had to uh, update the shifter spacers because I was uh, wanting to get, I started I think at a quarter inch and kept going up and I ended up at, uh, what did I get here, 0.7. Um, and that's what felt the best. These, uh, so the 3D model I have here of these shifters these are not these are actual ones that I did myself a long time ago I'm just kind of using it as a uh, something just for the model um, I mean I guess if you wanted to you certainly can print these and uh, it is a, a you know functional part uh, this print would be kind of hard to do because you have a lot of radiuses I did I have I should give a shout out to them so yeah um, at Dustin underscore Rand, he did, um, I saw, he, he's been sh doing this build and he's been sending me pictures on Instagram. So you can give him a follow if you'd like. Uh, but he is doing this build um, with a 3D printer. And yeah, so far it looks absolutely fantastic. So he did a, a print, uh, this shifter. And I mean, it's, it's functional, you can make it work. But yeah, I would if you're doing if you're you know doing it in an FDM, uh, it might not come out as good because you've got a lot of radiuses that are really tough to do. I mean, you could print it, print the lever on its side, and then also print uh, the base on its side, and that's what Dustin did. But then you're still gonna have this radius. But that's the beauty of having this file. I mean, if you're if you're going into that far, um, you know. If you're going that far into it, then you'll probably be able to, you know, make any changes, you know, because the the, whole, the file is right here, so you can do whatever you want to it, and that's the beauty of it. Um, same with this base. So this base was supposed to fit the uh, Precision Design Works shifter. However, they are no longer selling shifters. So yeah, I'm now going to be using the uh, whatever Precision Sim Engineering ones, the Leo Bodner ones. Um, because they they came down in price and now they're actually competitive. I mean, relative. They're, they're still pretty expensive. I mean, 15 or $20 over other popular competitors. But, I mean, this is almost a one-to-one -one for what the real uh, wheel is using. As you can see here, I mean, it's almost 
It might even be one to one. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, it's it's basically the exact same thing. So yeah, that will be cool. Um, another thing that I'm noticing right now that I'm gonna have to do, I'll probably do after the video, is change up the bolt pattern because um, I have my bolt pattern set for the uh, Precision Design Works one, not the Precision Sim Engineering one. So I will have to change that. I have those shifters on the way. Um, yeah, but that is the ones that I'll be using. I might have to even update the spacer because it might be different dimensions. But again, your mileage may vary. That's why these DIY projects, um, yeah, you can kind of customize it for yourself, but hopefully I can have the, the big stuff out of the way. Uh, like the grips and um, the more challenging things like that. What I'll be doing uh, today is I'm going to be changing uh, the uh, grips here because we'll take everything else out. So I'm going to be editing this uh, grip file here because what I have is Um, you can see there is a groove for the plate, but I didn't make any offset. So like the first time I did these, I just really kind of went the uh, brutal way and used a knife and just kind of carved it, carved out that plastic enough so that the plate could fit in there. But so yeah, I'll make an offset in this channel here so that the plate will be able to just drop right in. And then also what I can do is... Uh, do a uh, I can do like a countersink hole on each side so that you can actually just go right ahead and bolt them together or you could glue them I could probably just do like a like a hole with a countersink right through the plate that'd be pretty easy so yeah I'll be changing that that's pretty much all I will be um, editing everything else is pretty well set to go uh, another thing that I did change from the original if you had noticed is the button inserts they were actually like too small and so I had to go in and um, make these radiuses uh, just a little bit uh, wider so that the buttons can just easily drop in but uh, yeah I have I'm actually not going to be doing an FDM 3D print of the insert and the rear cover. I'm actually doing those in SLS now because uh, they really do look better, they look more professional and that's clearly what the real wheel is using as well. So um, especially you can tell how that it's really obviously an SLS print because of the radius on that fillet. Um, but yeah, since uh, with SLS, they're using a laser. Um, you can also tell on the front that uh, that is clearly an SLS print, just from that fillet right there. But what I mean, what you can do if you want to do just uh, a little bit of extra post processing is if you do print this in FDM. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure you've heard of just being able to sand it and then paint it, and you can get a really close finish to that because. That is actually what I did for the my my first working prototype that I sent to Sim Racing Garage was it was an FDM, and I just did all the post processing myself because I really had to get it out the door um, quickly, and so I didn't. I figured I'd just do it myself rather than wait for uh, a third party to make that. Okay, so that should be it from there. Uh, I could also get a little build materials for all of the hardware, but um, and another thing I do really recommend is getting this hub. This hub is available on Amazon. I will put a link in the description of where to get it. And I mean, you can get it in anywhere from one to four inch. I really like, I actually really like it. Um, it really, it has a 70 and a 74 millimeter bolt pattern when I'm obviously using the 70 millimeter bolt pattern. But what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna have the screw that goes through the front plate, through the hub, through the rear plate, and then uh, will it 
bolt into the spacer. So it sort of sandwiches everything together. And that is the easiest way to do it. Um, if, if you do not want it, you certainly can keep it off and have the quick release directly on that plate. It's just that I didn't, I didn't de uh, design a way for this rear plate to be mounted to the front because I mean, you could, you could put a screw through here and then you know have it come out the front but then you'd have an additional screw and it it wouldn't i wanted to have something that was as close to the original as possible especially because i mean i don't i, I do believe that's also what they're doing is it just goes from the front sandwich to the back and it and uh yeah i saw that's what they were doing and so i have way better reference reference photos than i had last time i kind of wish i had all these reference photos before but um the way that we came to this hub works great too and so yeah uh we also have a 50 millimeter bolt pattern on here and so if you have uh either 50 or 70 millimeter you know you, you could just uh go through that side do a countersink on that side and then have it go through the back plate and attach to the quick release that way i prefer again i prefer that spacer just because it kind of makes everything easier then you know any, anything you want to do can just attach to that okay so i'm probably going to be doing i'm going to be speeding through the next step which will be to change out uh, and edit the grips and once i do that i'll come back and we'll start on the cam process Okay, there we finally got it to work. Yeah, for some reason, for some reason I was having issues with uh, when I would extrude it to uh, extrude that little offset. It was like, there's all these little faces that it would leave behind and create a new body. But um, yeah, there we go. Now we got it to go. It's just kind of a quick, quick, cheap and easy way to uh, fix that. Not real pretty looking, but it seemed to work. So yeah, now, now what we'll do is we will uh, go ahead and we'll do the uh, drill holes and the uh, counter bores for the screws and then it should be pretty much ready to go it should be ready to print i'll probably be printing this overnight so yeah after we get that done then we can go into cam So yeah, I got the front side of these counter bores for the screws. I don't know exactly how long. I prefer, for those of you that don't know, I prefer McMaster car for all my hardware. Um, yeah, they've been my preferred vendor for all that. I mean, they have the best selection, um, you know, fast shipping, all that. But uh, so yeah, now what we'll do, we'll go in and see the dimensions of, um, I'll probably do a lock nut and yeah then we'll get the counter bar for the other side and we'll be ready to go i guess also really quick for those um i mean i'm going through it real quick i'm not explaining everything because i think that's a bit out of the scope um especially for design i mean i'm, I'm probably uh, probably 20 plus hours into at this point so i can't really do commentary on every single thing but um yeah i'm just doing a really quick and dirty way of putting in these counter bores which was to have an offset construction plane 
and then just do uh, create a sketch on that and then project that onto that sketch and then extrude it down to the part. I mean, that's there's always going to be like more than one way to do something, especially in CAD. I mean, it's the same way with graphic design, with whatever, anything you choose to do. And so um, this way is probably just the quickest and easiest way. And really, we're really not trying to impress anybody, so. Okay, so looking at that, we should be good to go. I think I think the uh, 25 millimeter is probably gonna be the best option here. And then one nice thing actually about McMaster Car that I forgot to mention is you can actually download the 3D file, which is super nice. So what we can do really quick here is download it and then see how it looks. So yeah, it looks like it'll go right in there. It'll go through the plate and to the other side and we'll have that uh, <clears throat> nylon nut on the back side. Yeah, that'll work pretty good. All right, so now we have everything set and ready to go. It's starting to look uh, kind of like a good looking model. So yeah, now I'm thinking what we can do, uh, export these grips and then we'll go into a uh, slicer and get them ready to print and then after that we'll go into cam and we'll uh, show it it's a pretty quick cam setup so that shouldn't take too long and I already have it done so yeah we'll be exporting these as an STL and then uh, we'll be importing it into slicer so the reason we have to export it as an STL is we have to make it a mesh body and then in slicer we can go in and do the settings for 3d printing all right so we got uh, those grips we got them exported as an STL. So what we'll do now is we will go into a slicer Prusa edition and we'll try to uh, see if we can get it set up. Yeah, so here we go in a slicer Prusa edition. We'll go ahead and add those four parts. Hopefully they'll all fit. Otherwise we'll have to do two at a time. So yeah, here is the uh, settings that I've done before. It's what I used on uh, other grips. On my first version so we'll go ahead and try to uh, slice that now see how it looks but um, yeah so essentially what I'm doing was I imported it into slicer and then that will generate the G code for the 3d printer to actually uh, make the part and I'm sure I could have gone in on that support material and made it a little bit cleaner but for the sake of time I'm just going to kind of, uh, I'm just going to kind of export it and set it and forget it. Uh, and then tomorrow I'll be running this overnight and tomorrow we can uh, see if it worked or not. But yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll be exporting these and then uh, we'll go into cam. Okay. So now that we have the grips exported and sliced and 3D printing, we can go back into cam and get the uh, cam set up for the front plate, the shifter paddles, and the rear plate. Okay, so here we have everything set up in cam, and this is gonna be kind of just a quick run through because if you're really new to cam and Diffusion 360, you should be going and looking at other tutorials and then coming back to this. Um, again, it's gonna be already in here, so those that are curious, you can download it and look for yourself, but. A quick run through of what we're doing so we're going to come in with a burr end mill 
and do kind of a roughing strategy and um, we're going to be clearing out just all, all of the pockets and we'll come in then and do a that counter bore uh, do a pocket on this counter bore for the rotary encoders because the I have, I have kind of a, a counter bore for the nut to go in there and it works out really good I tried it last time and then we'll come in and we'll do a contour to clean it all up with a burr end mill I, um, I'll be showing this I'll be showing video of this and it'll, it'll show just how good the surface finish comes with that burr end mill especially when you do that cleanup and then we'll also be cleaning up that counter bore and then we'll be doing uh, so the one thing about the lumber connector is there is a um, I don't know if you, what do you want to call it a little um, registration mark for the connector and so in order to get in there I'm going to be using just a little tiny uh, 32 thou flat end mill and I'm just going to be doing a contour in there and that'll be good enough it'll also help clean up and then from there we're going to be doing the drill on those m2.5 holes i think i'll probably just be using like a three millimeter drill actually and i don't want so the strategy is a drill in here but i'll actually be using an end mill because uh end mills especially with drilling carbon fiber and end mill is going to work way better at least that's what i've found and then we'll come in we'll do all of the pockets for the mounting holes and then we'll finish it off by uh, doing a contour with tabs so i can go through and do a simulation of what that looks like i prefer to take the toolpath off um, i mean unless i'm looking for something specific but what we can do, so then in the simulation, we can look and watch and then speed it up as well. And we'll have a few tool changes. So I'll be doing the quarter inch for that roughing and then we'll come in, I'll have to do a tool change to switch to that uh, quarter inch carbide, or not carbide, uh, quarter inch burr to do the finishing. Then we'll switch to the uh, 32 thou flat end mill then we'll be switching so it's one two three four five i believe yeah so we'll be doing five tool changes and i mean on my machine you have to do it all manually and then reset the uh, Z height or Z zero, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So there we have it. I think this file is pretty much ready to go. I think that um, it should be able to be readily available to download. Pretty easy to uh, go ahead and make your own, hopefully. Otherwise, I mean, you can always check it out at turnracing.com. You can see, I mean, it's cool that you can see a little bit of what goes into these you can understand why my price point is where it's at you can see really the time and effort that goes into it then in part three we'll go ahead we'll do the uh, 3d printing we'll do the machining we'll do the assembly the wiring i'll also show how i suede wrap this because i'm thinking that i'm going to actually be uh, holding off on a mold for this because i really wanted to show uh more of a DIY uh, versus having like a production mold because I mean really the thing the thing I feel like my uh, my philosophy on this is those that want to DIY they're gonna do it themselves so I mean if I can help add value to that community I am more than happy to show this stuff um, I'm more hesitant I feel on showing the production things because the only people that are interested in that are the people that are actually trying to copy this and make you know a business off of their own from my work i appreciate those that stuck around if you did get some value out of this and you plan on doing a uh, build of your own or you just enjoyed checking it out i'd really appreciate it if you helped support me on patreon as that is a way for me to continue to do these diy builds 
um, you know, the, the time and the materials that go into doing these types of things, as well as um, also plan on putting out more content like the like the turn podcast that is completely ad free and is just meant to share the stories of uh, sim racers of people in the industry of you know real race car drivers of uh, coaches and I have uh, plenty more kind of in the pipeline so stay tuned for that if you haven't yet if you like the video you can give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and we'll see you soon